Hello and welcome again to this particular session and of course section C is still on and subsection 3 of section C now we are picking up. This is question number 1 and balance sheet of sickness limited is given to you. Actually this question is from internal reconstruction. Very surprisingly internal reconstruction. Internal reconstruction under AS14 used to be uh, a part of or a segment of amalgamation absorptions etc correct so internal reconstruction however remember one thing as14 doesn't apply to internal reconstruction however most of the time we have seen that this particular chapter students must have actually gone through in their earlier phases of education but still we will talk about internal reconstruction. So this question is from internal reconstruction. Surprisingly, the question is pretty long as usual. Actually, I should not use the word surprisingly because almost every question is so long that it is virtually not thinkable that a student can really attempt that particular question in the stipulated period of three hours. Correct? So student, uh, as time and again, I have been telling and stressing upon this particular fact right from the beginning of the start of this particular series that is past paper analysis series that institute need to rethink their policy uh, correct that they need to actually just take into parameter the amount the level of the student the time available with the student and accordingly they should frame the questions but anyway but the most surprising aspect of this particular question is that remember one thing i have downloaded this particular paper from the site of the institute and I am giving you the biggest surprise in the sense that part 3 and 4, part 3, 4 and 5 which have been asked of you with respect to this particular question are not at all related to this particular question. Very, very surprising. You cannot attempt these three parts at all because these three parts are not at all related to this question. You, just to prove my point, see here, it is written the balance sheet of sickness limited, correct? And below it is given, calculate the price which CAS Limited should offer for the business. This is the name of the company. And earlier the name is Sickness Limited. First of all, these three questions are not at all related to internal reconstruction. It seems some intermingling has been done with respect to uh, what we call framing of this question. Anyway, you can at the most attempt only these two questions. Presuming that inadvertently institute might have what we call done this mistake or some printing mistake. Presuming this, thing, we presume because after all we are all are humans and we are all are prone to errors. Sometime error inadvertently, unintentionally happen. Correct? So, presuming that institute must have taken this factor into account and must have allotted proportionate marks to their students. So even though mistakes are kept, we presume that uh, students are given leeway for this particular mistake. So even though a student, if they had had attempted part one and two, logically they should be actually given full marks. So anyway, now we come to the point. Now we have to solve this question. Point is this. This question, as I told you, is related to internal reconstruction. Now what is the scheme of internal reconstruction? In order to make you understand this, first of all, because some of you might have forgotten actually what is the scheme of internal reconstruction. To make you understand that, just pay attention towards this particular fact. Suppose this is the balance sheet of a particular company. Of a particular company. And let us say in the balance sheet I have written some item. Let us say there are 10,000 equity shares of rupees 100 each. So total share capital is equal to 10 lakh. This is equity share capital. Correct? And of course, let us say there is 12% preference share capital. Presuming there are 5,000 preference shares and one share is of 100. So total preference share capital is equal to 5 lakh. Correct? Further, we presume that this company has got some tangible fixed asset in the form of plant and machinery. And value of plant and machinery written here is 10 lakh. But in the bracket, it is written that market value is 7 lakh. In bracket, it is written market value is 7 lakh, whereas in the outer column, we have written 10 lakh, correct? Similarly, there are some, let us say, furniture and fixtures. Furniture and fixtures are 3 lakhs in the outer column, but in bracket, it is written that market value is 2 lakh. Besides that, we have been given, let us say, investments. Investments. 
investments are worth rupees let us say 5 lakh and in the bracket it is written let us say market value is just about 3 lakh besides that there are some current assets let us say current assets are worth rupees 5 lakh besides that there are some items generally we call them valueless items like preliminary expenses underwriting commission discount on debentures correct etc actually these are fictitious sort of items that mean these are being reflected towards the debit side of the balance sheet simply because of the fact that such items are containing debit balance if there is a debit balance in preliminary expenses what does it mean it means this much of expenditure is still to be written off we haven't yet written off this much of expenditure let us say these item comprises of five lakh for simplicity's sake correct now if i will total them up 15 plus 10 25 25 plus 3 that is equal to 28 lakh and let us say we have 10 percent debentures also 10 percent debenture is equal to 5 lakh total is equal to 20 and we presume and we presume other liability equal to 13 lakh let us say this is the balance sheet of a particular company i just want to make you understand what is the scheme of internal reconstruction now you can see actually in this particular balance sheet there are many items which have been presented correct at a figure which is much higher than the market value for example we have written in the outer column 10 lakh but its market value logically is just 7 lakh similarly in case of furniture you must have noticed that in the outer column we have written 3 lakh but its market value is just about 2 lakh likewise investment in the outer column is 5 lakh its market value is 2 lakh technically i can say there are many items in the balance sheet which are overvalued which are overvalued means they have been written in the books at a value which is higher than the market value and that is not a very good policy if any investor is going to look at the, at it this uh, at this particular balance sheet the immediate reaction from that particular investor is that he would feel very bad about the affairs of this particular company within a flick of second the investor will come to know that this particular company is passing through a phase of financial crisis and its third conclusion will be that company is not having the sufficient amount of profits to reflect these items at proper value for example plant and machinery is overvalued by 3 lakh i may say 10 lakh in the outer column market value is 7 lakh so it is overvalued so it need to be bring down it it is needed that this value must be brought down to actually 7 lakh likewise furniture is overvalued by 1 lakh likewise investment is overvalued by as you can see 2 lakh correct and besides that this company is also having such items which logically should not be reflected in the balance sheet especially if you are in the trade since a long period of time let us say 10 or 12 years and in spite of that if such item gets reflected in the balance sheet automatically one may lead to lead to the conclusion that this particular company is not having sufficient amount of profits to write off these items which logically should be written off at the earliest correct so all in all when i am going to have a look over this particular balance sheet i am going to derive as i said very bad impression regarding the affairs of the company and we will come to the conclusion that the affairs of the company are not quite well and company is passing through a phase of extreme and acute financial crisis is it clear to you or not generally an entity as a last resort remember and please pay attention to the wordings which i am going to use generally an entity as a last resort goes for a scheme of internal reconstruction to overcome the situation of financial crisis and there is financial crisis affairs are bad and companies virtually in a mesh the indicators of such things are just the things which i just mentioned a moment ago if there are overvalued items there are lots of fictitious item or mysterious expenditure items appearing in the balance sheet these are indicators of the fact as i told you that affairs are not up to the level of expectations so in order to overcome such a situation actually directors of the company more often than not as a last resort goes for a scheme of internal reconstruction it is generally the scheme of internal reconstruction is considered as a part of restructuring but generally it is adopted as a last resort as a last resort 
we may actually go for some other what we call sort of measures to overcome financial prices. But if those measures fail, in that particular case, as a last hope, as a last measure, or as a last resort, as I said, we go for internal scheme, internal reconstruction scheme. Now, what is the scheme? So you must have noticed actually in this particular company, there are lots of overvalued items and lots of fictitious nature item, put it in simple words, valueless items, correct? Quite obviously, no company can afford to let such item stay at this particular figure. Because if we are going to release our financial statements carrying such items, as I told you, in the capital market, then our company will fare very badly and there will be horrendous consequences in the sense that no potential investor would like to invest into our company. Financial institution will shy themselves off from what we call investing into our company or sorry, lending to, into our, uh, lending to our company. And similarly, a potential investor would not like to invest their money into this particular company. Financial institution, as I told you, will keep themselves away from lending any money to this particular company. So all in all situation looks very gloomy if we will allow such items to stay for a prolonged period of time. So as a rule, such items need to be quickly written off and should be brought down to their proper value. So logically, in order to give a good shape to the company, what I should do, I, it is imperative for me now to bring this item to 7 lakh, this item to 2 lakh, this item to 3 lakh and to write off this. Then only the situation may look quite okay or not as bad as it is being reflected now. So in order to adopt such a scheme or the scheme which is adopted by entities correct to write off the overvalued portions of the item and to write off the valueless item, that scheme is known as a scheme of internal reconstruction. So under the scheme of internal reconstruction, what steps we do and as an entity, which steps are followed. So just pay attention. Under this particular step, Directors of the company will request their various parties, which are the parties, in this case, equity shareholder, preference shareholder, 10% debentures. Correct? That means we will request to the contributors whether they have contributed in the form of capital or through lendings. So there are equity shareholder, as I told you, there are preference shareholders. So, and there are debentures also who have contributed to the funds of this particular company. The directors of the company will ask these contributors to waive a part of their contribution. To waive a part of their contribution. Waive also is known as remit. For example, if you have lent me rupees 1 lakh, if you have lent me rupees 1 lakh, and if I tell you, please waive some portion of this loan. Let us say 30,000. Indirectly, what I am trying to tell you that you have given me 1 lakh, but I will pay you only 70,000 in full settlement. That means I am asking for a rebate of 30,000, sort of this. Correct? That is what we mean by waive. So here the directors of the company will ask the contributors to waive a part of their contribution. For example, I will explain it further. For example, in this case, we have 1 lakh equity shares. Correct? 1 lakh equity shares, right, not 1 lakh, 10,000 shares. So in this case, we have 10,000 shares. And let us say one share is of rupees 100 each. So total amount is 10 lakh. So if the directors are going to adopt a scheme of internal reconstruction, first of all, they are going to ask the equity shareholder to waive some part of their share capital. For example, director may say to the equity shareholder that you have subscribed to 10,000 shares of our company at the rate of 100, 10 lakh and we are very thankful to you. But at the same time, now you presume that you haven't paid us 100, you have paid us only 70, 70 lakhs. And please waive per share at the rate of 30. This is WAVE, W-A-I-V-E, WAVE. Director are asking the equity shareholder to waive some portion of their contribution. The total contribution is 10 lakh. Now, directors of the company is asking the equity shareholder, 10,000 shareholder, to waive a part of their contribution, that is rupees 30 per share. That means 30 lakh worth of capital will be waived. 
But the point is, if suppose you have given 10 lakh to somebody and that person tells you that I will pay you only 70 lakh, please waive 30 lakh, why the hell in the world actually you are going to accept it? No one, no sane person would accept what we call such a request. Would any? No sane person is going to accept such a request. Any person worth his salt, correct? He is not going to accept. If I have given 10 lakh to somebody, other person comes to me and tell, well, I'm going to pay you only 70 lakh or you presume that you have paid, sorry, 10 lakh, here it is 7 lakh and it is 3 lakh. Let us say I have given 10 lakh to somebody, other person comes to me tell and tells me that, uh, you presume that you have given me only 7 lakh. I will feel very surprised. I have given him 10 lakh and he's telling that you presume you have paid me 7 lakh. So I'm not going to accept it. But here you will be surprised to know that equity shareholders are not going to utter a single voice. They are not going to actually protest. They are going to listen it very coolly, calmly and they will also accept it very coolly and calmly. Reason being is that you might think actually it's a gross injustice to the equity shareholders. Correct? Because they have purchased 10,000 shares, they have purchased 10,000 shares at the rate of 100, they have paid 10 lakh and directors of the company are telling that you presume that you haven't paid us 10 lakh, you have paid us only 7 lakh. Logically, it's an injustice to the equity shareholder, but problem is that they don't have any alternative. Neither they can protest, nor they can fight. They will have to accept this injustice. Why? The reason being is that if they are going to protest, then what will happen? I told you internal reconstruction scheme is adopted by the ent entities as a last measure, as a last hope, as a last resort to overcome this mess. Correct? So now if equity shareholders are going to protest, no, 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 we are not going to accept this injustice. Then what will happen? The scheme of in internal reconstruction cannot be adopted. If a scheme of internal reconstruction cannot be adopted, who would be the biggest loser? In that case, equity shareholder will lose their entire share capital of 10 lakh. That is the reason actually equity shareholders are not going to protest. Is it clear to you or not? They will have to accept it. To be very honest, in practical life, in order to conduct a scheme of internal reconstruction, when some meetings are held, extraordinary meeting or annual general meeting, whatever it is, when such meetings are held, equity shareholder even do not feel to come into the meeting because they know that they don't have any, any other alternative. They cannot say no. So that is the reason equity shareholder will have to accept the, this gross and injustice. Now in accounting language, I will tell it in this manner, that director under the scheme of internal reconstruction uh, has this, have decided to reduce equity share capital from 100 to 70. So that means 30 per share has been waived and this part which is waived will is a sort of gain to the company because now earlier the company was supposed to pay to the equity shareholder 10 lakh now this will become my new equity share capital generally we say old equity share capital it will be cancelled it is new equity share capital and this amount 3 lakh which is waived correct which is left by the equity shareholder you can say in casual language correct or the 3 lakh which is remit by the equity shareholder. We never use the word remitted. Remember one thing. Remit. Remit means to waive. So whatever amount is remit or whatever amount is waived off, that amount is a sort of gain to the company and that amount is transferred to, a, to an account known as capital reduction account or internal reconstruction account. So my entry will be equity share capital account debit 10,000 into 100, 2 equity share 10,000 into 70 and 2 capital reduction account 10,000 into 30. Whatever is waived, that amount will be transferred to internal reconstruction. A similar sort of request will be made to the preference shareholder, to the debenture holder. So whatever amount is waived by these different parties, that particular amount will now be transferred to, as I told you, to a newly opened account that is known as capital reduction account or internal reconstruction account. Now whatever amount gets accumulated in it, that amount will later on be utilized in writing out as in writing off or writing out what we call our overvalued portions and all the what we call valueless items or any such items which is working against the image of the company. So that is the crux of internal reconstruction scheme. So under the internal reconstruction scheme, directors of the company, as I told you, simply ask their various ask the parties or the contributories to waive a part of their contribution. The part which is waived is transferred to an account, as I told you, capital reduction account, also written as internal reconstruction account. 
then whatever amount gets accumulated, that amount is utilized in writing off overvalued portions and all the valueless items. Correct? So this is the theme of internal reconstruction. First of all, I just wanted to make you understand. Some of you might have forgotten. So now we come to the question. Again, this question is not easy. To be very honest, that is the reason you must have noticed that no one else has given any solutions to these papers. So I can take great pride in it that I am the only faculty at this movement who is presenting what we call solutions for all these papers. And nowhere else, as you know, the solutions are available. Is it clear to you? So you also consider yourself lucky in this regard at least. So I will solve it. No problem for you. But I have already told you it is very surprising that this sort of mistake was committed when this question came in the examination. Part 3, 4 and 5 are not related to this question. Only part 1 and 2 we can solve. So now just pay attention over here. So let's actually take up this issue. Given below are the extracts from the balance sheet of Sickness Limited. The name of the company itself is Sickness Limited. Correct? And this question is also available. Uh, almost in every professional body examination, to be very honest with you. And uh, now, if you have the question paper with you, please open it before you, because uh, this question is not very clearly printed, even in the original site. That is why I am telling you. Anyway, <coughs> share capital is given to you first as a first item. We have a look over here, share capital. In the share capital, it is given that there are 8,000 equity shares. One share is of 100, total 50 per share. So, if you will have a look over here, you can see there are 8,000 equity shares and their face value is 100 and called up and paid up amount. See, actually question has written only 50 per share paid up. It means we have out of 100, we have called up 50 and it is also paid up. So that is why in the outer column we have written 8,000 into 50, that is 4 lakh rupees. Is it clear to you? Then there are 4,011% cumulative preference shares of 100 each are there, again 4 lakh. We have security premium, we have general reserve, current liability, now in the bracket they have written trade creditors 1 lakh 36,550. Actually total current liability is 3 lakh 10,000 and it includes current liability to the tune of 1 lakh 36,550. Is it clear to you? Then we have in this case tangible fixed asset 8 lakh 50, less depreciation. Now tangible fixed asset, gross value and depreciation is given. Due to some or other reasons, if I am going to ask you what is the net value of tangible fixed asset, then let me compute it also. So as far as tangible fixed assets are concerned, 8,50,000 and I am going to subtract 2,70,000, correct? 2,70,000. So value is equal to 5,80,000. Its written down value is equal to 5,80,000. So net value, as we call it, is 5,80,000, correct? Then we have got, in this case, goodwill. We have got goodwill. Investments, inventories, inventories are 2,15,000, trade daters are 2,50, and cash and bank balances are 1 lakh. Further, it is given that contingent liability not provided. In simple words, it means contingent liability. Contingent liabilities are never provided. If it is a contingent liability, why I am going to make a provision? If I would make a provision, then it will not remain a contingent liability. So contingent liability itself means this amount is not yet provided for. Preference dividend are in area for three years, including the including the year ended 31st March 2021. Correct? Including the year. Your current year is ending on 31st of March 2021. In this question, no information with respect to 18, 19 and 20 is given. That is why I told you in third part, something is asked with respect to 2018 and 19, 2019 and 20, even 2020 and 21. In fact, in this question, no such information is related. Actually, these three questions are related to, it seems, some question as if those are related to financial management questions, honestly speaking. So that is the reason we cannot attempt part third, fourth and fifth. These three parts are related to some other question, correct? 
Now we come over to this particular point. Preference dividend. First of all, you need to understand that preference dividend in area. In the question, it is given to you that there are 11%. There are 4,000 shares. 4,000 shares of 100 each preference share I am talking about. These are cumulative preference share. Cumulative preference share, as you know, are those preference share in which if in a particular financial year we fail to pay the dividend, then such dividend will keep on accumulating. That is the reason these are known as cumulative preference share. Correct number one. Second point which you need to understand that question states that preference dividend is in area since last three years. Now, if I am going to compute dividend at the rate of 11% preference share capital is 4 lakh. So, one year dividend will be equal to this much and three years dividend 44,000 into 3 will be equal to 1 lakh 32,000. That means 1 lakh 32,000 worth of dividend we are supposed to pay to the preference shareholder because this 1 lakh 32,000 is total accumulated dividend of last three years. So, since last three years we might have failed to pay the dividend. So, total accumulated amount now is equal to 1 lakh 32,000. That is number one thing. Second point as a professional student which you need to know is that preference dividend or areas of dividend is are always considered as contingent liability. Contingent liability. First of all, they cannot be considered as a liability. First of all, liability means something which is written in the balance sheet towards the liability side. If something is written, suppose if I take loan from somebody, I, am, I will receive cash, but at the same time, I am going to write loan as a liability towards my liability side. So, item which is appearing towards the liability side reflects that we are under some sort of obligation. We are under some sort of foundation and mandation to pay that particular amount after a specified period of time. And if we would fail, then punishable action, punitive action could be initiated against us. That is what we mean by liability. Now, something which is not written in the balance sheet, correct, for example, we have to pay the dividend, areas of dividend, but it is still it is not regarded as liability. Now, the question is why? The reason is that Number one, dividend is always payable out of profits as you know better than I. I have already told you companies passing through a phase of financial crisis because company later on we are going to see is adopting a scheme of internal reconstruction. So that itself is a sign that company is not having sufficient amount of profit. Number one, so if we are not earning profits, we are not bound to pay the dividend. This is point number one. But point number two is that even if we would be earning profits, even in that case, payment of dividend is not a force upon us. Payment of dividend is not a mandation upon us, not a foundation upon us. Are you getting my point or not? Because payment of dividend is the discretion, is the choice of the directors of the company. Even though if the company is earning profits, let us say director decide not to pay dividend, no shareholder in the world has got any right to actually uh, grab our neck. It is impossible. So payment of dividend is never ever considered as a liability. Remember one thing. Is it clear to you? So, preference dividend are in area. It's okay. We have written by way of footnotes. Now, further, the question states that funds of the company are sufficient to discharge the liability. So, in this case, question states that company has got sufficient funds to discharge the liability, including the preference dividend in area. That means company has got funds enough to discharge liability and even to discharge areas of dividend. However, the company does not want to deplete the resources. So, however, company do not want to actually now reduce its present resources. So, it would also like to reflect the values of some of its assets in a realistic manner. That's what exactly the point I brought before you earlier. That means that in the imaginary balance sheet which I drew a while ago in front of you. So, we may say in one word, could say that we did not represent the items in a realistic manner in the sense because what we represented were not reflective of their true value. So here also there might be some items which are not realistically shown. The board of directors of the company decided and proposed the following scheme of reconstruction. A scheme of reconstruction is also known as rehabilitation scheme, correct? And it is effective from 1st April 2021. So, logically, it means we are adopting the scheme of internal reconstruction on 1-4-2021. So, what is the scheme now? Let's have a look. Question states that cumulative preference shares, cumulative preference shareholders are to be issued 
In exchange of their holdings, 13% debenture of the face value of handed each at a premium of 10%. And just to confuse you further, question says that fractional holdings are to be paid in cash. Fractional holdings are to be cash. First of all, question says cumulative preference shareholder are to be issued in exchange of their holdings 13% debenture of the face value of handed each at a premium of 10%. And any fractional holdings are to be paid off in cash. What does it mean? Just pay attention. In order to make you understand, first of all, I will write an entry here with respect to point number one. I will look into my preference share capital. We know my preference share capital is 11% cumulative preference share capital account. Cumulative preference share capital account. Correct? 11% cumulative preference share capital account. We know that we have got 4,000 shares of handed each that is equal to 4 lakh. 4,000 shares of handed each 4 lakh. Now question later on says that the cumulative preference share holder are to be issued in exchange of their holding. Now total holding of preference share is 4 lakh. So we are simply telling to the preference share holders that we will issue you Against your 4 lakh, we are going to actually uh, make you a payment of debentures. So, I will write here to 13% debenture account. To 13% debenture account, how many debentures I will issue, I will let you know. And because I am issuing debenture at a premium, I will also write to security premium. And besides that, I am going to write to cash. Question says that in order to pay or in order to settle preference shareholders liability, we are issuing them 13% debenture. But 13% debenture will be issued as question says that at a premium of 10%, one debenture is of 100. So that means I will issue one debenture at the rate of 110. So how many debentures actually I am going to issue now that is the major question. For that, I will have to compute the number of debenture and for that, I will have to divide 4 lakh, just wait, 4 lakh divided by 110. That comes to 3636. So that means 3636.36 36 debentures I will have to issue. Are you getting my point in this case? 3636 three, debentures we will have to issue in exchange of preference share means we want to settle the liability of the preference shareholder by issuing them what we call debentures. Now, problem is that debentures can never be issued for for that instance shares. They can never be issued in fractions. So first I will appropriate it to 3636. Three, never appropriate to the higher level. Even if after point it would have been 7, I would have still appropriated it to 6 only. 3636 three, I mean to say. So now I come to know that I will have to issue 36 three, six debentures of rupees 100 each. One debenture is of 100. So I will write here 3 lakh 63,600. And then I will write security premium. 3636 into 10 because debentures are being offered at the rate of 110. That means per debenture premium is 10. So that is 36,360. Logically, I am supposed to pay to the preference shareholders 4 lakh. I am supposed to pay to the preference shareholder how much? I am supposed to make a payment to the preference shareholder to the tune of rupees 4 lakh. But if I am going to subtract all these figures, there will be balance of 40. That means rupees 40, I will have to pay in cash because this difference is coming due to fractions. That is why it was written over here, if you look at, it was written that fractional holdings are to be paid off in cash. That is what we mean by that fractional holdings. Is it clear to you? So this much of payment shall be made in cash. Now, what is the second point? Second point is with respect to areas of preference dividend. Question says that areas of preference dividend are to be converted into equity shares of handed each 
rupees 50 per share paid up areas of preference dividend and we have just we had just a while ago seen that total amount of preference dividend in area happens to be 1 lakh 32000 correct 11% of 4 lakh into 3 so we have decided to make the payment of preference dividend now pay attention this is a very interesting point this is point number 2 this is with respect to preference dividend. Under point number two, I will first of all write an entry preference dividend account debit. Preference dividend account debit to equity share capital account. To equity share capital account. We have already seen that total dividend of last three years in area is equal to 1,32,000. So we have decided to pay the preference dividend and of course, we are paying preference dividend in the form of equity shares. In the form of equity share. If you want to know how many equity shares actually you are issuing, you will have to divide it by 50. You will have to divide it by 50 because we are offering equity share of 100 each, 50 paid up, 50 paid up. So for that, 1,32,000, 1,32,000, divided by 50 that will give you 2640 shares i will write in bracket 2640 equity shares of 100 each of 100 each 50 paid up so these many shares i will have to issue to settle preference dividend now please pay attention in account suppose if i have written towards my liability side loan amount 10 lakh let us say or 1,32,000. I have written towards the liability side. Imagine yourself that you are having a look over a balance sheet of a particular company and there is towards the liability side a particular item in the form of loan 1,32,000. And suppose if you pay that loan, what will be the entry? Loan account debit to bank account. If you pay in cash. Suppose in order to settle the loan you issue equity share, your entry will be loan account debit to equity share capital account. Now when you will pay the loan by issuing equity share equity share two things will happen your equity share capital will increase because you are floating new equity share and at the same time the amount of loan which was appearing in the balance sheet now will get erased out because now you have paid that item but here what will what is happening preference dividend you are making a payment for the preference dividend number one your equity share capital definitely will increase see here in the beginning, you had 8,000 share. It was given in the balance sheet. Now, because of entry number two, you have issued 2,640 more equity share of rupees 100 each at the rate of 50. So, your equity share capital has gone up, number one. But not a single liability has fallen down. I'm talking about in the balance sheet. Do you think any liability has got reduced? No. Now you may say, sir, our contingent liability is now over. But contingent liability is not written in the balance sheet. Problem is this. So logically in accounts, if you make any payment, and on account of that payment, if no liability comes down or no asset comes in, that is considered as a loss. Remember one thing. It is considered as a loss because in this case, neither you are receiving any asset nor your any liability is coming down. So that is why this payment, whether in cash or in equity share capital, will be considered as a loss. So this loss must be written off. So under the scheme of internal reconstruction, all the losses will be debited to capital reduction accounts. So you will write another entry, in this case, capital reduction accounts capital reduction account debit or you can write internal reconstruction account debit capital reduction account debit to preference dividend account to preference dividend account now your preference dividend account will get closed so 132000 this is the entry now you are going to write is it clear to you or not is it clear to you yes sir now it is clear to us if it is clear to you 
So preference dividend payment is always considered as a loss. Remember one thing. Similarly, if you pay any fee, any penalty, because these liabilities are never ever written in the balance sheet, these are, these are considered as loss in accounts. Now we move over to point number third. Question says that after the issue of equity share in second above, now in second above, that means after the issue of equity share till up to this point, till up to this point, correct? Question says that paid up value of all the equity share to be reduced to rupees 25 each. What does it mean? We know that till up to second entry, we have now 12,000, sorry, 10,640 shares. Because we just issued 2640 equity share earlier, we had 8,000. So now, after a, after point number 2, we have 10,640 shares of 100 each and 50 paid up. Now, question is telling that you are reducing the paid up value from 50 to 25. That means, now here the scheme of internal reconstruction is coming into play. You are telling to all these shareholders that you have paid us at the rate of 50. Now, presume as if you have paid us only 25. So, that means indirectly, directors are asking the equity shareholder to waive 25 per share. We are reducing the paid up value from 50 to 25 means we are telling the equity shareholder to waive rupees 25 per share. So, as per this entry, after the issue of equity shares, under point number 2, the paid up value of all the equity share to be reduced to 25 means in point number 3, now my next entry will be equity share capital account debit. See here, we had or we are having, should I say, 10,000, as I told you, 640 shares, 10,640 shares. And we are reducing these shares by 25 paid up value. That means now paid up value is just 25. So 10,640 into 25, how much? This amount is waived. So it will be transferred to capital reduction account. It will be transferred to capital reduction account. Correct? So, it will be transferred to capital reduction account and what will be the amount? The point is that the amount will be, just wait, 10,640. 10,640 into 25, that is equal to 266,000 according to my calculation. Correct? According to my calculation, that is 266,000. Now, you write here 266,000. On account of this entry, what is happening? First of all, you need to keep a track of this. Because of these, this entry, two things are happening. Because equity shareholders have been forced to waive a part of their contribution, quite obviously, equity share capital is getting debited by 266,000. Correct? So, we may say our equity share capital has reduced by 266,000. That is number one. And our capital reduction account has increased by 266,000. Again, in point number 4, now there is point number 4 also. Now question says that, so that means after entry number, this is still up to point number 2. Now after entry number 3, what is the situation? We still have 10,640 shares of 100 each, but their paid up value is now just 25. Their paid up value is just 25. Earlier, the paid up value was 50, but now it has been reduced to 25. So, presently, my equity share capital is 10,640 into 25 after entry number 3. Now, in point number 4, question says that the face value fit now. It is not a case of paid up value. Question says the face value of all the equity shares to be reduced to 50 each. Now, in point number 4, what directors are deciding? Directors are deciding that face value, which is 100, should be reduced to 50. That means indirectly after this decision, my equity share capital will be 10,640 shares of rupees 50 is because now their face value has become 50. Of rupees 50 is 25 called up. 
after entry number 4. Now, when we are going to change the face value, remember one thing, it is not going to affect. See here, at this stage, my equity share capital is 10,640 into 25. Correct? At this stage. And if I multiply 10,640 with 25, it will be equal to 2,66,000. So, in my entry number 4, I will write equity share capital. 10,640 shares we are having, of rupees 100 we are having, and paid up value is 25, so 25 paid up value. So 10,640 into 25 will be equal to 2,66,000. Now in this entry, there will be no gain or loss. Only thing is that we are changing the face value. My face value earlier is 100. Now it will become 50. So I will write equity share capital account debit to equity share capital. And now in bracket I will write 10,640 shares of rupees 50 each. Because now my face value is 50. 25 paid up. 25 paid up. So only thing is that on account of this entry the face value has changed. So that is why there is no gain or loss in this particular entry. Is it clear to you? So now my equity share capital after entry number 4 as I told you is 10,640 shares of 50 each, 25 called up. Now question in point number 4 itself also says that face value of all the equity share to be reduced to 50 each. And the balance of the unpaid portion is to be called up fully. What does it mean? That means in entry in point number 4, this is entry number A and I will have to pass another entry. What does it mean? Question says that unpaid portion to be called. Now what is the unpaid portion? Could you tell me? Because as per point number 4, now we have 10,640 shares of 50 each, 25 per up. So, what will be the unpaid portion? The unpaid portion will be 25. That means, now, after this decision, my equity share capital will be 10,060 of 50 each and 50 called up. That means, full amount is called up. So, we are calling up the remaining amount means we are calling up 25. So, when you will call the amount, your entry will be simple entry, bank account debit to equity share capital account. Bank account debit to equity share capital account. On 10,640 shares, you are calling unpaid portion of 25. So again, it will be 2,66,000. This is how you are going to pass the entry. After this, the question says, after this particular point, question says that goodwill has lost its value. So, goodwill has lost its value and it will have to be written off. So, that means in this particular question, I will have to write the amount of goodwill. Whatever goodwill appearing in balance sheet, I will write it off. Market value of tangible fixed asset is determined at 4,99,250. This was the point I, I was trying to tell you earlier. I told you while explaining the question, just wait, mouse is... So while explaining the question, I told you that gross value of tangible fixed asset is 850, 2,70,000 is depreciation. That means at this moment, the carrying amount is actually 5,80. Now question says that below the question states that value of fixed asset is determined at 4,99,000, 4,99,250. Four lakh ninety nine thousand two fifty. That means you have to bring your tangible fixed asset from this value to this value. Is it clear to you or not? So that is something about I think eighty thousand seven hundred fifty. Eighty thousand seven fifty. By this much amount, you will have to. So we will have to write off goodwill as I told you. And as per this particular line, I will have to bring my tangible fixed asset by. 80,750 and then there is another point in this question investment have no market value and have to be written off so whatever investment which are appearing in the balance sheet investments are worth rupees 25,000 so investment also you will have to write off 
investment 25,000 you will have to write off and goodwill is appearing in the balance sheet I think at 40,000 so goodwill 40,000 you will have to write off further the question says that inventory is to be valued at 110% of its book value now value of inventory now if we will look here value of inventory is 215,000 correct value of inventory is 215,000 just wait I will rub it out so as to create lesser confusion. Inventory is 2,15,000. 2,15,000. Its value is estimated at 110%. So that means it's well, so it is 100% value. So simply add 10% to it. So if you will add 10% to it, it will be 21,500. That means the value of inventory has gone up to 2,36,500. You could have computed 2,36,500 in this manner also. 2,15,000 into 110 divided by 100. And then you could have taken the difference. Anyway, point is that value of inventory is moving up. When you do the, when you do the solution under the scheme of internal reconstruction, it is always better to keep track of all the gains first. For example, in this question, there is gain. So, it is better to write this entry first. Inventories account debit because value of inventory is going up. Inventories account debit and value of inventory is going up by 21,500. And any gain will be taken to capital reduction account. So you will write to capital reduction account 21,500. So I have taken this gain. Further, the question says that trade daters are to be discounted by 5%. That means value of trade daters, which is 250,000, it is coming down by 5% and 5% 5 is 12,500. So that means in this question, I have to write off goodwill, tangible, fixed asset, investment, and I have to bring down daters by 12,500. So for that, I will have to pass an entry. What will be my entry? First of all, I will write here capital reduction account. Now I will check what is the net balance in capital reduction account. Let me check it first. Correct. I will take the calculator. This is credit balance 21,500. So I write here 21,500. Correct. I have taken this balance. Then I will see where else I have written capital reduction. Here I have written capital reduction plus 266,000. Then capital reduction was debited. Here it is debited. So I will subtract minus 132,000. So net balance at this moment in the capital reduction is 155,500. So net balance in the capital account is 1,55,000 net credit balance. Now I will utilize this balance in writing off all such items. Correct. For example, I have to write off goodwill. So I will write goodwill. Amount of goodwill is equal to 40,000. So I will write off goodwill by 40,000. Then in, in this particular question, I told you tangible fixed asset need to be written off. I told you tangible fixed asset. Their net value at this moment is 5,80,000. From 5,80, we have to bring them down to 4,99,250. And amount which we computed earlier was 80,750. So tangible fixed asset need to be written off by 80,750 so as to bring their value from 5,80 to 4,99,750. That's 4,99,250, sorry. Then we have to write off investment also. So I will write investments. Amount of investments is 25,000. So I will write off investments by 25,000. And besides, trade daters have reduced by 5%, and which we computed 12,500, 5% 5 of 2,50,000. So these are the items which we are supposed to write off. But the problem is that, let me check how much this total is coming to. 40,000 plus 80,750 plus 25,000 investment plus 12,500 
problem is that this total is equal to 150 if i will total all these items this total is equal to 158250 this is the problem that means the amount which i need to write of all these items is 158250 but problem is that our internal reconstruction scheme is providing only 1,55,500. So, if I, take, I will take the difference of these two, this difference will be equal to 2,750. So, that means there is a shortfall. So, how, how I am going to fill this shortfall? I will look into the balance sheet and I will utilize my reserves. So, you know in the balance sheet there is general reserve. So, from general reserve, I will take the amount 2,750. For example, in this question there is general in this particular question there is general reserve to the extent of 60000 so 2750 we will take out of general reserve or we will utilize general reserve to write off all these items this is one possibility sometimes shortfall can take place at the same time if there would have been any balance left towards this side correct then that balance would have been transferred to capital reserve account if there would have been balance towards this side. However, in this question, there is no balance. In fact, there is shortfall to the extent of 2750. So, this is the internal reconstruction scheme as at 1-4-2024. As at 1-4-2021, sorry. So, you have adopted your scheme of internal reconstruction. Now, after this, I hope you, it is not needed now. So, I will rub it out. Correct? And I have already told you these three questions can, are not possible. Okay, now I will need some more space, but how will I create that space? Because we have to answer these two things. Question is asking, calculate the balance of profit and loss account which will appear in the balance sheet of Sickness Limited on 30th of September 2021. Remember, we have already adopted the scheme on 1-4-2021. And question is asking, situation after six months because six after six months we will come over to 30th september 2021 so question is asking what is the balance in profit and loss account on this date and second question is that what is the cash and bank balance which will appear on this particular date so we have adopted the scheme on 1 4 2021 that means six monthly more situation is given to us in this particular question so let's have a look over that what else is given in the question then only we shall be able to give answer to this it is given in the question later on that the scheme as approved by the director is fully accepted by all authorities and put into effect that means on 1 4 2021 we have effected the scheme of internal reconstruction during the working for the half year ended, that is from 1-4-2021 till 30th of September 2021, it is noticed that trading for the period has resulted an increase of bank balance by 55,100. Now, question says that during the next six months, that means after we have had adopted the scheme on 1-4-2021, in the next six months, what is happening? Questions as per the question, what is happening? Now I will first of all erase all these items, correct? And even this is not needed. Okay, so I have created a bit of space for myself now. See, now in the next six months, what is what is happening? Question says that from 1 4 2021 till 30th of September. Question is telling that from this particular date till this particular date, there is increase in bank balance by 55,100. Okay increase in bank balance by 55,100. This is one part of the question. Further, the question says that during these six month trade daters by 20%. That means daters have also gone up by 20% during this particular period. Daters have gone up by 20%. Further, the question also says that trade creditors have also gone up by 20%. Trade creditors have also gone up by 20%. Okay. Trade creditors have also gone up by 20%. Okay. Trade creditors have also gone up by 20%. Okay. Trade creditors have also gone up by 20%. Okay. Tr
trade creditors have also gone up by 20% during these six months and decrease in inventory has taken place to the extent of 6%. So value of inventory has fallen down by 6% during these six months from 1-4-2021 till 30th of September. Also question states that depreciation on fixed asset is to be provided so depreciation on tangible fixed asset of course depreciation on tangible fixed asset at the rate of 10 percent per annum is to be provided another point question has given that the increase in bank balance was prior to the company paying half yearly interest on debenture and redeeming one half of the debenture on 30th of september what does it mean that at least two things we have noticed here that during these six months interest on debenture is also paid interest on debenture is also paid and one half of the debentures one half of the debentures have been redeemed one half of the debentures redeemed so in the next six months such a scenario has taken place is it clear to you or not yes sir so if such a scenario has taken place now i have to find out profit and loss account balance profit and loss account balance how i am going to find it problem is this profit and loss account balance of course as at 30th of september 2021 you have gone through this accounting equation right from the first day of your journey into the commerce stream that assets is equal to liability plus capital suppose if i tell you my assets are 5 lakh my liability is 0 and my capital is 5 and later on i tell you in the current year my cash has increased by 1 lakh. Obviously, if my cash has increased, I am going to increase my asset side. What else I am going to increase? Could you tell me? Suppose I tell you simply, I have received a rent of rupees 1 lakh from my tenant, let us say. So, that is increasing cash. So, 1 lakh, I will increase the cash. What else I will, am going to do? Obviously, I cannot increase the liability, I will increase the capital. But why I am going to increase the capital? Because it is a profit to, to us. If I am going to receive the rent, it is a profit to us. Why it is a profit to us? Because we are receiving cash only and against the same, we are not delivering anything. No physical thing is moving out. So it is a profit, number one. Increase in cash unless and until otherwise stated is always synonymous with profit. You need to understand this. If I say there is increase of cash of let us say 1 lakh in this particular month, indirectly it means in this particular month my trading profits have gone up by 1 lakh. Why I told you I hope you have been able to derive the analogy. You must have driven, driven the analogy. Analogy means why I am citing this case. Because in the question it is given that during these six months our bank balance has increased by 55,100. That means during these six months profit is equal to 55,100. Is it clear to you or not? That is the reason I am trying to tell you that why you need to understand all these things and why your concept should be so strong. Anyway, scale is not there. Further, during these six months, my daters have also shown an increase. So I will add daters plus increase in daters because that will increase, increase in daters. Now, could you tell me on 1 4 2021, what was the amount of the daters on 1 4 2021? See, your daters were 250,000 trade daters and 12,500 worth of daters were written off because 5% as per the scheme we wrote off daters by 12,500. So, 
on 1 4 2021 i may say my daters is my daters are equal to 2 lakh 37500 and from 1 4 2001 till up to 30th september daters have gone up by 20 percent so 20 percent of 2 lakh 37500 you will have to compute this will be equal to 47 000. you also compute yourself please compute first of all 2 lakh 37500 into 20 percent that is equal to 47,500. Two lakh thirty-seven thousand five hundred into twenty percent. Let me also check. Let me also check. Two lakh fifty thousand minus twelve thousand five hundred. Two lakh thirty-seven thousand five hundred into twenty percent. That comes to 47,500, correct? Correct? So, I will add it. Question also says that trade creditors have also increased. So, increase in trade creditors will be subtracted. Trade creditors. Now, trade creditors, what is the amount of trade creditors? I told you trade creditors were written under the heading current liability. See here, three lakh ten thousand is total current liability, and trade creditor is equal to one lakh thirty six thousand five hundred fifty. One lakh thirty six thousand five hundred fifty. So one lakh thirty six thousand five hundred and fifty. This is the amount of trade creditors. This is the amount one lakh thirty six thousand five hundred fifty. Right, it is. Now trade creditors have gone up by twenty percent. So you will compute twenty percent of this figure first of all. And this figure will be equal to 1,36,550 into 20% and that will give you 27,310. Obviously, you are going to subtract this item. Correct? Then, there is also one more adjustment was with respect to inventories. Inventories have fallen down by Inventories have fallen down by 6%. Inventories have fallen down by 6%. So you will subtract inventories also. You will write here inventories. Now, if I am going to ask you, what is the balance of inventories on 1-4-2021? See, as per the balance sheet, inventories are 2,15,000. And we saw earlier that inventories went up by 21,500. That means on 1 4 2021, inventories are equal to 2 lakh 15,000 plus 21,500, that is 2 lakh 36,500. And now you are going to take 6% of it, 6%. In the question, it is written 6%. Inventories have shown a decrease of 6%. So 2 lakh 15,000 plus 21,500 into 6%, that comes to 14,190. 14,190. Correct? So, decrease in inventory. Decrease in inventory will also reduce my profit. Increase in data will increase my profit in the sense my sales are increasing. Trade creditors. Trade creditors are decreasing. That means we are making the payment to the trade creditors. So that is the reason actually our profits will decreasing. Anyway, so this is how you are going to find out. But also it was given in the question that these profits, these profits are before, sorry, this increase in bank balance was prior to, was prior to company paying half yearly interest on debenture and redeeming one half of the debenture on 30th of September. So, and in fact, I have written all these points also. There was also depreciation. So depreciation, we will also consider less depreciation. Now, value of tangible fixed asset. Could you tell me what is the value of tangible fixed asset? On 1-4-2021, uh, sir, 4,99,250, right? 4,99,250 this value was given to you. This value was given to you 4,99,250 on 31st of March 2021. Correct? 
So now we have to provide depreciation at the rate of 10% and of course for 6 months. If I will provide the depreciation, my profit will reduce. And if I am going to compute the amount of depreciation, it will be equal to how much? 4,19,250 into 10% divided by 2. That is approximately 24,962. 24,962. Problem is that, question also states that, this increase in bank balance is before the payment of interest. Now suppose if in the current year you are going to make the payment for interest on debenture, what will be your entry? Your first entry will be interest on debenture account debit to bank account and then interest on debenture will be debited to profit or loss account so your profit will get reduced. So you will write here interest on debenture interest on debenture. Now what is the amount of interest on debenture? Interest on debenture will be interest on debenture, sorry. Interest on debentures. Remember you had issued to pay preference share capital some debentures in your entry number one itself and the amount of debenture is 3,63,600 and there are 13% debenture. So, interest will be, half yearly interest will be 13% of 363600 because this much of debenture, 363600, right? Absolutely. And for half year, that means from 1st of April till 30th of September. So, this much will be equal to how much again I will compute that. And it will be equal to 363600 into 13% divided by 2. It comes to 23,634. 23,634. 23,634. Is it clear to you or not? So, and don't commit this mistake because later on it is also given that we have redeemed the debenture. See, when we are going to redeem the debenture, we have to pass only one entry, debenture account debit to bank. Redemption of debenture is not debited to profit or loss account. So we may say the balance in profit and loss account is this much as at 30th of September, correct? So, what will be the balance? Actually, this balance which is given to you in the answer in my opinion is, in, is incorrect because this question is taken from a particular book and that particular book has shown is something in the vicinity of 12,500 something which I am not very sure but let me compute it. 55,100 plus 47,500 and 27,310 will be subtracted. 27,310, you will subtract 14,190 and you will subtract the amount of depreciation 24,962 and you will subtract 23,634. So that comes to 12,504. That was the point I was trying to tell you. 12,504, you can check this also, this is question is available. So, this should be your correct balance. However, your this answer is correct, but this is, this should be in my opinion anyway, but this is how you have to do this particular question. Now, we can find out the cash balance which will appear in the balance sheet as a 30th of September. How to find that? So, cash balance what will be your cash and bank balance as on this particular date? You have been given that as per the balance sheet, you have been given 1 lakh is the balance. As per balance sheet, balance is equal to 1 lakh. It is given to you in the question itself. Then it is also given that during the next six months increase in bank is equal to 55,100 it is given we just saw 
During the next six months, your cash has increased by 55,100. But before that, before that, in the entries which you have written, you made a payment of cash 40. Actually, instead of writing increase in bank first, you could have take, adjusted all these items first. Less fractional payment. You paid cash fractional payments. 50 rupees you paid, 40 rupees, sorry, you paid. And then, then, then in the entry we receive, when we float it, when we called up remaining amount of 25, we received 266,000. So I will also add it. Amount called on equity share 266,000. Now, in these six months, we made a payment of interest on debenture. When we will make the payment for interest on debenture, entry will be interest on debenture to bank. So I will reduce my cash bank. And then I will write profit and loss account debit to interest. That is why while computing the profit, I have subtracted it here also. And here I am making the actual payment, 23,634. Depreciation I will not write under cash. Don't write this depreciation. But you have redeemed your one half of the debenture. Redemption of debenture. As you know, total debenture 3,63,800 worth. And one half of the debentures you redeemed. And one half will be equal to 1,81,800. And your this balance is correct. 2,15,600 and actually here it is written 630 that is actually 2,15,000 uh, I think 626 let me compute because difference of 4 because of appropriation that is okay no problem but your this balance is 12,504 correct so this is how we will do this particular question. It's a pretty long question. Not only I have to solve the question, I have to first of all explain each and everything. In fact, I have to explain the entire chapter. So that was the main point. One lakh, let me compute also, plus 55,100 minus 40 fractional payment plus 2,66,000 we called at the rate of 25. And then minus 23,634 and minus 1,81,800. So that will give me 2,15,626. Right. So these are your perfect answers. And I've already told you, unfortunately, this is, this mistake should not have taken place in my opinion, but it took place. I can't help it. So these three questions are not related to this question honestly speaking so that is the reason you can solve only one and two so that's enough for the day in the next session we'll talk about something else till then it's goodbye